gosh, when you look at the top of the building here, it looks, you can't really tell from this perspective, but it's, it's leaning in quite badly. So today we're looking at the German's woolen mill in Glen Morris, Ontario. The mill was built in 1867 by Alva and Sydney German to manufacture woolen yarn and blankets. So the mill operated from 1867 until early into the 20th century and in around the early 1900s. And at that point it was sold from the Germans, the German family to the McRae family. And they operated it for some years, but later it was closed because of competition with larger mills. And the mill was converted into a lodge at some point, but that really wasn't found to be very profitable. And during the time that it was a lodge, there was a shooting death in 1941 of one Mr. Dan Hoover, and that was a shooting that was actually never solved. And then a little while later, it, the lodge was sold to a person from Brantford named T.E. Robson, and the lodge was remodeled and refurbished as a summer house. So for a short amount of time, it was operated as a private uh, summer residence, and in 1944, the CPR, the Canadian Pacific Railway, closed the only access road that goes to the property. So a short while later, around 1945, the site was abandoned and fell in disrepair and resulted in what we see today. If anybody knows uh, what transpired uh, from 1945 until the present day, that resulted in the ruin that we see now. I'd really be interested in hearing about that if you want to write that in the comments below. It would be very interesting to find out what the, the latter history was of the site. There's really just a shell left here now. If you're new to this channel and you're wondering what it's all about, we visit abandoned places and other locations that have some history or are very interesting to photograph. It's fairly rugged construction. It's, you know, mostly limestone and, uh, and what looks like river rock mostly, putting it all together. Not really very much brick per se, but mostly just field stones that have been shaped. It's hard to understand what happened here, but you know, it really doesn't look like there was a fire or anything like that that uh, destroyed the building. It just really looks more like it kind of fell in. And all of the floors and roof uh, just fell into the center and rotted away. I guess I can do that. Uh, although I, it's strange that there isn't more evidence of uh, the internal structure on the floor of the building here. If you look at the back, you can see the opening for the raceway. The raceway was the water sluice, basically, that came from the river and went underneath the building to provide moving water to operate the machinery. So around the year 1886, when the mill was in operation, there was a drowning that occurred when a little girl fell into the water raceway that uh, enters underneath the mill and exits the other side. Uh, she was swept under the mill itself and she drowned. It's very impressive though, you know, really, it's a building that's well over a hundred years old and it's still very, uh, very solid in most parts. So you can see the construction is basically loose, kind of stone, limestone, river stone, and presumably they got a little bit of cement. I'm not sure where they would have got their cement in those days. But, you know, they were making cement at that time by firing cement rock in kilns, make kind of a powdered uh, cement. This is a little bit before Portland cement was, was manufactured. I think in, in some areas, uh, such as uh, Queenston, Ontario, they were making cement at around this time around this time frame. So there were definitely places that were manufacturing cement locally. 
gosh, when you look at the top of the building here, it looks, you can't really tell from this perspective, but it's, it's leaning in quite badly. So the upper, the upper story, the upper third floor looks like it's, it's ready to kind of uh, fall into the center part of the building. It's really a shame. Yeah, there's some, uh, there have been some full-size trees in here. It looks like somebody has uh, sawn them down previously to just kind of keep it open. I'm not sure what kind of restoration efforts have, uh, have ever been attempted or whether there's anything underway that might save this kind of structure in the future. But it's good to, it's good to have this kind of building around and, and uh, be able to retain that history. So you can definitely see the raceway at the end of the building there. It's the circular structure right at the bottom, right at the base of the wall there. So that would have been where the water would have flowed out of the building. Yeah, the building looks looks pretty shaky. <laughs> it looks like it's uh, coming coming apart as we as we watch it. You can see the remnants of uh, lath on the wall. So it was strapped and there was lath and presumably there was plaster applied to that. You can see some spots up the up at the uh, up on the second floor there where it, it looks like there's uh, still a little bit of plaster still there. So that would have been probably from the days when it was operating as a, a lodge or a private residence. Uh, I, I doubt very much as a woolen mill they had uh, plaster walls at, at that at that point. So that was probably a latter addition. So you can see where the raceway came in on the lower left, the little circular structure there. That would have been where the uh, the water would have come in the building. So surprisingly there's still some of the wood uh, around the windows and doors, uh, albeit it's pretty rotten in some spots, but uh, there's still still some of it existing, interestingly enough. This is the Germans Woolen Mill from Glen Morris, Ontario, built in 1867. Thanks for watching the video. This is Dave from Photog Hiking. If you like the video, please share it with your friends or subscribe. And definitely if you want to share some comments, I'd appreciate that very much. Bye for now.